Continuing with the um, topic of local operators, which we started last week and basically continue for a few more minutes, um, presenting the um, remaining part. Before I continue, I just have a very, very brief recall on what uh, we were talking about last week. So the topic was local operators. That means operators which generate a mapping from an input image to an output image and for computing the corresponding output pixel value here in the middle, we're actually taking into account a region in the input image. And this is kind of a small region, or depending on how large I define this neighborhood, um, but typically this region is not too large compared to the overall size of the image. <coughs> These operators are called either local operators or neighborhood operators. And then we looked how can I actually express those operators and then we ended up in a formulation using a so-called kernel function w, so this is a kernel function, um, which I use in this form, so this was my input image, this was my output image, and there was my kernel, this kernel has a certain size, typically centered around zero, where we sum over all those values, which defines the neighborhood of that kernel, or the, 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 the area where this function is non-zero defines my neighborhood, and I have to sum over those individual values, multiplying the corresponding kernel value with the input function. And this allowed me to generate different types of such local operators. The concept that you see here is actually a convolution and can typically be expressed by the form f convolved with w. And this w was our kernel. And depending how we define this kernel, we get different properties. So we, for example, have seen kernels which were used for smoothing an image. These are typically kernels which average over a local neighborhood. Or we have also looked into gradient operators. So the idea was, to, can we actually compute the first derivative of our image function based on those operators? And we started with that. Then we're saying, we want to approximate the first derivative by looking into what is the change in, in f, so in the intensity value, and the change in x. Um, OK, so this was one too much. Um, and then it turned out we could show that we could actually compute the gradient for an image, which is now a 2D structure, by computing the gradient in the x direction and the partial derivative or gradient in the y direction. And then we can express this as a magnitude of the gradient as well as its direction. So that means what we obtain now is um, a two-dimensional structure. So the structure is two-dimensional you know, from one input image into a two-dimensional structure, which tells us something about the gradients. We have this example over here. This was our input image. We can compute the partial derivatives with respect to the y direction, with respect to the x direction, and then actually combine them so that we get one image which shows the magnitude of the gradient. So these are all large values, wide is the low value. And we can also encode the direction of that gradient here, simply depict, shown by different colors. And that's kind of where we ended up last week. So we have seen that we can, this, this concept of the kernel and the convolution using a kernel allows us to define local operators. And depending on how that kernel looks like, we get different properties like averaging, for example, using the Gaussian filter or the box filter. Or we can do things like computing the gradient. And what we want to look into today is one special form um, of an operator, the so-called Sobel operator, which we continue with, which basically computes a smoothing in one direction and the gradient in the other image direction. So we can say this in X is a combination of a smoothing in, y, in the Y direction and a computing the gradient in the X direction, which simply by conducting the convolution gives me this shape. So I have a smoothing in this direction and the gradient in this direction. And can define the same operator in the y direction. So I have the Gaussian smoothing in this direction and my gradient in this direction. Now I can actually use the Sobel operator and move it over the image, and I actually obtain those partial derivatives in a smoothed way, in a smoothed fashion. We can also argue if using here these Gaussian filters is the best way for smoothing. So kind of this was my, just now showing this for x, was my Gaussian kernel for smoothing. And now I can simply say I can take a different kernel for smoothing, so this is also a smoothing kernel. 
not taking values 1, 2, 1, but 3, 10, 3. So it's simply a different, weights, a different weight that you give to the central pixel that you want to compute and the left and the right pixel. And compute um, a kind of a Zobel operator with a different smoothing function. Again, we still compute the gradient in this direction, nothing has changed, but we simply use a different smoothing. And this leads to the so-called char operator. And again, it's exactly the same thing as the Obel, Sobel operator, sorry. The only difference is that it uses a different function for smoothing. And given this kind of improved or different kind of smoothing, we actually obtain better results for computing the direction of our gradient. So the Sobel operator is exactly the same at the char operator, except that those numbers differ. So instead of um, 3, 10, 3 for the char operator, we have 1, 2, 1 for the Sobel operator. It's just the different kinds of weight that I give to in the individual pixels. But except of this, it stays exactly the same. So I obtain a remaining filter for compute the gradient in x, uh, in x and the gradient in the y direction. So let's look to an example how that looks like. So given that this is, this is our, these are our intensity values, so we have kind of a smoothed bright rectangle here, kind of dark areas over here. If I visualize this image as a function mapping from 2D to uh, a one-dimensional variable, so instead of representing this 1D variable as a color, I can also represent this as a Z value, then this is exactly what this function looks like. So this is just a different type of visualization once using color and once using the um, z values. And then I can actually compute the gradient, so we expect to get a zero gradient here and a zero gradient in this area and a non-zero gradient here along these lines. And this is exactly what you get. If you see those arrows over here, so they're pointing upwards to the gradient here, it's smaller, gets larger, and then gets smaller again. This directly corresponds to this plateau over here. And using this Sha operator, we typically get an accuracy of those vectors here in the order of 0.5 degrees. So we get actually a quite accurate um, estimation of the gradients in our image. So we can compute the first derivative of the intensity function just by applying such a simple kernel and, and convolving our input image with this kernel. Again, the kernel is very simple. Just two different types of value, positive and negative, on a small 3 by 3 matrix. We can apply this as a convolution and obtain the first derivatives of our intensity function from our image. So next question is, if we want to co can compute the first deriv derivative, can we also compute the second derivative? Quite likely, it's just the application of our gradient on, the, on exactly this output image. Right? So what we can say, okay, the computing the second derivative in 1D can be exactly expressed in the same way. We say, okay, this is our <coughs> tw twice the gradient applied to F, which I can express simply as a convolution of three functions. You can also express this as first computing the convolution with F, uh, the, the gradient with F, and then computing the gradient of that. That's completely equivalent. Okay, so now how, let's look how those individual elements look like. We say in the most simple form, without any smoothing, um, the gradient simply takes 1 and minus 1, or 1 and minus 1, depending in which dimension I compute my gradient. So it just takes the f value at this point, subtracts the, neighboring, the one of the neighboring pixel. Okay, so we can put that in, saying, okay, let's say this is my simple, um, my, uh, my simple uh, simplest form of kernel function for computing the gradient. Now I need to convolve this kernel with itself. So what we can simply do is we can simply say 1 minus 1 convolved with mon 1 minus 1 and then use this trick like just the, the regular multiplication. So 1 minus 1 is minus 1, 1 times 1 is 1, minus 1 times minus 1 gives me 1, and minus 1 times 1 gives minus 1. So this is 1 minus 2, 1. 
So the result of this convolution is a kernel 1 minus 2, 1. So the result of that, this is exactly this expression. So by doing this computation, I end up getting 1 minus 2, uh, 1, exactly the output that I have specified here. And so this is then exactly this. It can express this as one single kernel function which takes this element. So I simply need to have take this kernel and convolve it with my input image f and then actually obtain the second derivative. It's just in 1D. So I have a 1D image with this kernel, with the convolution with this kernel, I simply obtain the second derivative. Is there any question about this concept so far? So we started from saying if we want to compute the first derivative, we simply have to subtract our, the different intensity values that we have at two neighboring locations. Given that we have a fixed constant pixel size, it's just specified by subtracting the different intensity values I have at two neighboring pixels. This at least the, given that I have a discretized image, there's an approximation of the gradient of a continuous function. Then we showed that we can express this as a kernel, so that a convolution of our original image with this gradient kernel allows us to compute the first derivative. We can say if we can compute the first derivative, we can use exactly the same trick and simply again compute the derivative of the first derivative and end up obtaining the second derivative. This is exactly what we did here. So our image, however, is two-dimensional and not one-dimensional. So what we obtain is, or what we actually want is the Hessian. We can obtain the Hessian by simply stacking up the individual de partial derivatives that we can compute for one dimension into our Hessian matrix. So the second derivative from our image function can be expressed in this form where these are our individual derivatives. So twice with respect to x, twice with respect to y, and here we have those elements where we use one kernel um, derived with respect to x and one with respect to y. Okay? So just as a repetition, let's now look into those three individual values. So those values are exactly the same because I can simply change the order in the convolution. It's commutative, that's what we have seen or showed actually last week. So those two elements are the same, so I have three different elements that I need to consider if I want to compute the Hessian of an image function. Okay, so this is again our Hessian. These are the remaining kernels, and we obtained them by having our second derivative in the direction in which we want to compute it with the smoothing in the other direction. This, and so the, the reason for this is this is already a smooth, in this direction we already did a smoothing. If you remember, if we go from this individual kernel to the, one, so if to go from 1 minus 1 to 1, 0 minus 1, this can be expressed by a smoothing in, the, in this direction with the box kernel. And here we simply do the same, do the smoothing in the second, in the second um, dimension. And this gives us exactly this element over here in 2D. Here we simply apply twice the first derivative, both smoothed once. Gives us this element over here. And for the Y we do exactly the same as for the X direction, except that both are swapped. Okay. And so with these three elements, we can compute our Hessian matrix. So that means what we get is we take our input image, apply this kernel, so we get those elements over here. We apply this kernel, we get those two elements over here. We apply this kernel, we get this element here. That means if I compute the Hessian for one input image, I basically get three output images because for every pixel I have those three values at evaluated at different locations. Okay. So my new image, the new three output images that I get simply tell me for every position in my image what is the, whatever, for example, first derivative with respect to x, the uh, second derivative with respect to x, second derivative with respect to y, or derivative with respect to x and y. Okay. 
So something else I can do if I'm actually interested in um, the magnitude of the gradient x and y into a single operator, I can define something which is called the Laplace operator, which is something which can, for example, be used for doing some simple edge detection. Say, so, okay, I define my operator as it's the first the second derivative with respect to x plus the second derivative with respect to y. So in the end, obtain these two elements here by just summing up those elements and we keep those same values because we take care about our normalization. But just by adding them up, I simply have an operator which simply computes the sum of the gradient with respect, uh, the second derivative with respect to x and respect to y for every location. Okay, So the Laplace operator is a simple operator which turns in one image into a second image with exactly those properties. You can again apply a smoothing, so if we, if we smooth that even more just by convolving that again with a smoothing, we can actually use this now for doing some, for doing edge detection. So we can take an input image and apply this operator. So consider what was the, the condition for an edge. So an edge is a change from dark to bright or bright to dark. So basically look where my second derivative is zero and I have the condition that the third derivative is unequal to zero. If I just say, okay, I just look into the first derivative and simply as an approximation of that, simply take into account the, the sum of the second derivatives with respect to x and respect to y, I can simply apply my Laplace operator and I have to look for those locations where the Laplace operator gives me zero. So the, applying the Laplace operator on an image, simply adding up the values for x and y, so this is the second, deriv second derivative of f with respect to x and the second derivative of the image with respect to y, and I check where those operators are zero. I simply apply that over my image and now labeled all elements which are non-zero with a black color here, which are close to zero. We can see there's not a perfect, so this is exactly the same image we, we looked into before of the, the house with the roof. We can see some edges are visible quite well, but there's definitely a lot of noise in here. So I have to be aware we only checked here for the second derivative we haven't looked into, um, that we also have the case that this gives zero if those two elements take the same value but just in the opposite direction. So we'll have uh, quite some false positives which we can actually see from this image. This, but, but you can see that this is at, at least to some degree has something to do with edge detection. So the sing, sing, simple operator can be used for a very simplistic form of edge, edge detection by just applying the Laplace operator to our image. So kind of to sum that up, what we have done last week and kind of the remaining block this week. We looked into local operators and expressed those local operators using kernel functions and convolutions of our input image with the kernel function. We showed that we can do things like smoothing with it, so smooth our image with different basically looked into two kernels for smoothing, which was the box filter and the Gaussian filter. And we looked into the gradient um, and then computing the first derivative, second derivative, um, in order to estimate the gradients in this image. So the take home message here is that just by, just by defining a rather simple kernel function, we can actually extract different properties out of local image regions. We can do this for the whole image in a very efficient way. And of course, there are different types of operators which highlight different properties of my image, and I can, just by defining such a kernel function, compute this in a very, very efficient way. Okay, are there any questions about the idea of local operators so far? <coughs> 